is Mark Ringo, Business Account Manager at FileMaker, and I'm your host for today's Getting Rid of Paper-Based Process web seminar, where you'll learn how FileMaker's customers like Austin Convention Center and iScience have leveraged FileMaker Go to replace paper. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes on the next slide. For best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. During today's presentation, you'll have an opportunity to type in questions. On the next slide, we will talk briefly about how to enter a question. Go to the control panel, click on questions section to reveal the question section and enter your question and send. We'll cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. On the next slide, I want to introduce the FileMaker platform. The FileMaker platform is not just one product. It is a group of products and technologies that all work together. With the FileMaker platform, you can create custom business solutions on Windows and Mac with FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Pro Advanced. FileMaker Pro is our flagship product, and it's what you use to build solutions. However, if you build solutions for a team of people, you'll want to use FileMaker Pro Advanced, which comes with power tools such as the script debugger, the data viewer, database design report, and also allows for custom menus and much more. FileMaker Server is the hub of any successful FileMaker deployment, which, al which allows you to host your FileMaker solution and provides automated backups and remote administration. And you'll need FileMaker Server to use our new FileMaker WebDirect, which is breakthrough web technology that runs custom business solutions directly in a web browser on a desktop or laptop with no web development skills required. FileMaker Go brings your FileMaker solution to your teams on iPads, iPhones, and iPod Touch devices. All your FileMaker solutions created with FileMaker Pro will simply work on these mobile devices. And best of all, FileMaker Go 13 is free at the App Store. So anybody that's on the webinar today, if you've got an iPhone or iPad, go out to the App Store and you could download FileMaker Go version 13 for free and start playing with it. We've got a couple starter solutions that come along with FileMaker Go. On the next slide, I'd like to discuss the benefits of FileMaker Go. What if you can instantly update current inventory levels from the warehouse while scanning barcodes? What if you can capture digital signatures to close sales deals on the road? What if you can collect research data, including photos and audio files in the field? Also, swipe through patients' medical records in the emergency room. And what if you could conduct teacher evaluations in the classroom? These are just some examples of FileMaker customers today who are leveraging iPads or iPhones for their business. On the next slide, I'd like to discuss why our customers have gotten rid of paper-based processes. Paper is hard to share with remote workers. The data on paper becomes very obsolete very quickly. And leveraging paper can be a very manual process. And the biggest issue that we see with paper is security. It's just simply not secure. And storage has become very, very costly. And then the biggest issue that um, both prospects and customers complain about is with paper, you may have multiple versions of the truth. In fact, we've got customers say contractors and landscaping type companies that literally now meet with their customers and they're able to provide them with a price quote right from their iPhone and iPad. And the customer can simply review and if they accept the terms of the quote, they could use their finger and sign right there on the mobile device. They could also take a look at specific blueprints and make changes to the blueprints that the contractor provides them right from the mobile device. On the next slide, I want to discuss the Austin Convention Center business use case. Austin Convention Center transformed paper-based service order forms, work orders, and floor diagrams into a mobile application that provides a mobile workforce the ability to view, 
process and reference event information across a facility that spans six city blocks. On the next slide, let's discuss how Austin Convention Center operated before FileMaker Go. The exhibitor's work orders were based solely on faxes and paper. The orders were keyed into a system, printed out and placed into a binder with diagrams and other paperwork to start deployment or fulfill changes. This was a very manual process. On the, on the next slide, let's look at how the convention center has become more efficient with FileMaker Go on iPad. The good news, Austin Convention Center was already using FileMaker Pro for their billing system, so they could leverage the skill set that they already knew in FileMaker. They didn't have to learn anything new. They very quickly designed work order forms on the iPad. Employees now have real-time access to work orders, change orders, and floor diagrams, an easy-to-touch interface. This led to fewer errors, faster installs, and increased customer satisfaction. But more importantly, they had a very compelling return on investment. With FileMaker Go for iPad, the project payback was less than four months, with an annual ROI of 200%. In fact, according to the IT service manager, there was an estimated annual savings of 24000 If you'd like to learn more about this business use case from Austin Convention Center or other FileMaker customers leveraging uh, FileMaker Go on iOS devices, go out to FileMaker.com, then Solutions, then Customers, and then Stories and you'll get an opportunity to browse through our library of customer success stories. And some of those, like Austin Convention Center, has a video that accompanies them. At this point, I'd like to introduce Jeremiah Hammond of DB Services. He's going to be taking us through the customer success story for iScience. Thank you, Mark. Today we're going to look at a case study from iScience of a physical inventory count process that started out paper-based, transitioned to spreadsheets, and ultimately ended up as an iPad application in FileMaker Go. We'll focus on how easy it is to get up and running with an iPad application in Go, highlighting the ease at which you can set up a FileMaker solution to use the iPad's built-in camera to attach photos to a record, and then utilize barcode scanning for faster and more accurate data entry. So iScience's primary objective is to design what spaces and equipment are needed in new or revamped STEM facilities and then procure that equipment for each space. So spaces meaning rooms and then STEM facilities. So STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, mathematics. STEM facilities such as hospitals and laboratory centers, things like that. iScience has 50, around 50 employees across the globe. They work on pretty big projects, facilities over 1 million square feet in size. One of their current projects, the University Medical Center for Louisiana State University, LSU, UMC, is they, they are, this, this medical center is replacing charity, um, the previous hospital that was rendered useless during Hurricane Katrina. There's a 1.75 billion dollar, excuse me, billion, million dollar budget for equipment and furniture, and construction was budgeted for about 1.3 billion, to give you an idea of the, the size of projects that iScience works on. Um, in this particular case, this facility is expected to, to open uh, July 1st, 2015. iScience itself is headquartered in Glendale, Arizona, but the majority of employees are on site at whatever project they're working on. Because these facilities are so large, they have to manage everything on site. So iScience went through a couple of systems previously before the iPad application. So in the 90s, they used a paper-based system. You can actually see the, the paper form there on the left. These systems all center around counting physical inventory. And counting physical inventory only matters on projects on facilities that are being revamped or being replaced. And the idea here is that you can, the, these facilities want to reuse 
the equipment that was in the previous facility for the new one to save on how much it's going to cost to supply equipment into the new facility. So at the beginning of a project, iScience goes through and walks through the previous facility and catalogs all the equipment that's there. And the way it works is they send out teams of two where one person has a clipboard with that paper form on it and a second person has a film camera to take a photo of the equipment. And so the first person, they'll walk up to a piece of equipment in a room, equipment like operating table or an MRI or a computer, what have you. They'll walk up to that piece of equipment and the person with the paper form starts filling in basic information about it. What's its serial number? What's its make, model, the description? and then the location of that piece of equipment. So what building are they in in the facility? What's the floor? What's the room number? And then where exactly in that room is this piece of equipment located? And then the second person who's taking a photo will take the photo and then tell the person, hey, tell the person with the, with the paper form, hey, this is photo number one of film roll three so that the, the paper form could, you know, the person could fill in like, okay, that's, that's that, that photo so they can come back to it and they can find it later if need be so they can go when they're looking at the the inventory records they can go okay that inventory record I want to see that photo okay that's photo one out of three the so back at the so at the end of the day the the teams would go back to the to the office and would transcribe what's on the paper form into a spreadsheet on a PC so you'd have this master spreadsheet on, on a PC and then they would develop the film rolls and put the resulting photos in a photo album and then have a reference. They would put a reference number on each photo so you would go find it later. So needless to say, the whole process was very time consuming. There was a mixture of electronic and physical data. You had double data entry with transcribing the paper form to a spreadsheet. And then you had to haul around this, this, this physical photo album, which, you know, it took a while to even find, when you're trying to find a photo, it takes a while, and, and sharing photos, of course, is very inefficient. So there's, there's plenty of places for improvement here. And so in the 2000s, when laptops and digital cameras became more ubiquitous, iScience transitioned from using the paper form to using a laptop and from using the film camera to using a digital camera. So the, the, there was no more double data entry needed because the person with the laptop could just enter in the data directly into the spreadsheet. And you have a digital camera now, so there's no physical, you don't need physical photos, you have all digital data. So that, that definitely saved a ton of time. But this process had its own inefficiencies. The photos were, the, were a big part of the inefficiencies. Uh, you had to transfer the photos from the digital camera back to a desktop back to where the master spreadsheet located. And when you transfer these photos, you would have to worry about unique photo names. The iScience only had multiple teams going out, multiple teams of two each day. So when you have, when you take the, the digital cameras from all the teams and you move the photos to the computer, the desktop, you have to make sure you don't have any name conflicts. So you could either rename the photos to make sure all the photos have unique names so they don't override each other. Or you could make folders for each digital camera and each day so that you can just put the, their, their respective photos in those folders so there's no, no conflict there. And then once you did all that, you had to update the master spreadsheet to reflect the changes, the new name or where the, you know, the folder structure. Either way, very cumbersome, time-consuming process. So the, the master spreadsheet itself would get very large and it would be hard to search because these spreadsheets would get to be over tens of thousands of records. Data entry is pretty inconsistent on the spreadsheets on the laptops because there weren't any drop-down lists, checkbox sets, ways to standardize input. And then they're also dealing with battery life issues on, on the camera and on the laptop. You, the, these, these laptops and cameras just wouldn't last throughout the entire day, so they're scrambling for outlets in whatever room they're in and that definitely slows down the cataloging process. So these were the previous systems that were used prior to the iPhone application of FileMaker Go. So in, in 2012, iScience was beginning a project here in Indianapolis, uh, revamping the Wishard Hospital downtown. And 
they, just by how the, the cards fell, they were supposed to have three years to do the project, but they ended up only having one. And because of the time crunch, they, they needed to find a faster way to do inventory besides using, they needed something faster than laptops and digital cameras. So they were thinking about having an iPad application. And so they started searching online for applications, for inventory applications, mobile applications, and they just couldn't find anything that, that really fit their needs. They, they, you know, they, found, they found systems that are either you know, too complex, too bloated, uh, didn't fit their workflow, were, were desktop applications, not mobile applications. They just, there, there wasn't really a good fit out there. And then iScience ran into FileMaker, eventually ran into FileMaker, and they, they took their, the inventory starter solution and realized, wow, this, this, this handles most of the, the, the problems we're trying to solve. So they started running, they customized Jerry, Jerry Club, the, the president of iScience, he, he took the starter solution from FileMaker and customized it to fit their workflow, and they ended up using that starter solution for the Wishard project, for catalog inventory for the Wishard project. And I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. So the, the, the major problems that the iPad application was tr is trying to solve, it's trying to... It, it, it needs to have the ability to use the iPad's built-in camera to snap a photo. It needs to store that photo in the inventory record itself so that you don't have to go hunting and finder for the photo if you want to look at it. It's just when you see the inventory record, boom, there it is. So that increases just efficiency on that alone. And they wanted to use a barcode scanner to, to have information automatically populate into a new inventory record based on a tag number, based on that barcode, it's a tag number. And th this, this actually what is relevant to the LSU project, not the Wishard project, is where they needed this barcode scanning to work. And I, I will, I'll, I'll show you guys that in a little bit, but that's where we, DB Services, came in. We, the, the starter solution handled the photo side and got that all working, but the auto-population of data we, we ended up doing for, for iScience. Okay, let's go ahead and dig into these two systems. So I'm going to show, I'm going to go ahead and show the starter solution that iScience had for the Wishard project, the previous solution, and then I'll show you what their current system, the one that we built, how that looks. So first thing we're going to do is to show the starter solution. I am going to go ahead and put that on my iPad. So to do that, I'm going to use iTunes. So let me get that going here. Hold on one second. My, my iTunes is trying to back up my iPad see if I can get it going. Okay, good. All right. So in, on iTunes, in iTunes, you would select your iPad here. So you got my iPad and then you go to apps. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you should see FileMaker go in the list here in the apps list. And then on the right, you will see a list of documents for FileMaker Go. And all you do to get a FileMaker file onto Go is you just drag from the desktop into this list of documents the file that you want to open up and go. So there you go. As simple as that. Let's go ahead and get Go up and running here. Let me show you guys that. Let's get that on the desktop. Okay. All right, so I got Go here. Let's go to the device. Let's open up the Wishard starter solution. Okay, so this is a list of, I got some sample data from the Wishard project, not a lot, just a handful of records here. This is a list view. So I'm just gonna tap on one of them to take you to the detail screen. So this is really where Jerry customized, the iScience customized the system. So you'll see there's already some branding here. You got the iScience logo, you've got the name of the project. So Jerry, Jerry, the president, he did all this. He customized the starter solution all in one weekend. 
and I'll show you what he did, but it was enough for him to get up and running and it solved the majority of the requirements here. So he, he changed some of the styling here, changed a little bit of the way this looks. And then he, he removed fields from the, the screen here that weren't relevant. Cause when, when you get this, when this, when you get a starter solution up and running, when you, when you, when you create a starter solution, there's already some fields there for you, some standard fields. There were just some that didn't, didn't apply to the workflow. So he removed some and then added ones that, that were relevant. So you've got this department, you've got room number, room name, you know, what, what's the item manufacturer, so on and so forth. So he went through, he made fields, he, he added them to the screen and he, he changed the labels here. And then he, he also put drop down lists where they made sense. You'll see the little arrows here. If I click on one, you'll see the list show up. So there, you can standardize data entry. I can just click on that. And if I go back up to the top, excuse me, you'll see there to put the value in the, in the field. And so he went through all the fields where it made sense to standardize data entry. And he went ahead and did that. And then he also added these checkbox sets here on the right, which are very similar. At, they're, they're very similar to, to value lists, how to set them up. So, you, you know, standard data, data entry, and he also made data entry faster in this case. You can just check, check, check. You can just tap on it. And there you go. Tap on it. There you go. And then the, finally, the big thing, the big thing that this did is it had a photo field on it. The, the, Inventory starter solution already had a photo field, and it allowed it allows you to use the iPad's built-in camera. So let me go and show you that. I'm going to make a new inventory record. I'm just going to name it test, and you'll see here that you just tap on the field to take a photo. So I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to press camera here on the right, and then I'm going to go ahead and you notice the camera comes up. I'm going to take a photo of my keyboard here. And then I'm going to press use photo. There you go. So just by that photo field alone, we solved, two, we solved the major problems with photos. No more need for a digital camera. You can use the iPad's built-in camera for this. And then you, FileMaker automatically takes that photo and stores it with the inventory record that you're on. So there's no more hunting for photos in Finder. So, and Jerry, iScience didn't have to didn't have to do anything. It was just already there out of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and show you, even though it came out of the box, it's very simple to add a photo field. It's also very simple to add value lists. So I want to go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm going to close this. Then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and show you the desktop here. So you, to make changes to layouts, to, to, to make design changes, coding changes, you have to use FileMaker Pro on the desktop. FileMaker Go is meant only for, it's meant only for data entry. So I have the Wishard solution up here. I'm going to go to that iPad details screen, and you'll see that's what we were looking at on the iPad. So let me go ahead and let me do the photo field first. So I'm going to go in the layout mode here. This is where I can make changes to the layout. Then I'm going to go up to the database. So file, manage, database. And then I want to make sure I'm in the inventory table because that's where I want to add a second photo field to. So I am. So I'm going to type in photo2 here to name the new field. And then I'm going to change the type on the right to container. Container fields are where you store binary data. So in this case, we're, we're storing photos instead of we're not doing text, we're doing binary. So I've just made a container field and I press create. And there you go. The container field's been made. I'll go ahead and press OK here. And then I'm going to add the photo field to the layout. I'm going to use the field picker up here. And I'm going to scroll down to my new photo 2 field at the bottom. And then I'm going to drag it on the layout. I'm going to resize it so it fits in this little top left corner. And then I'm just going to save the layout up here. And that's it. That's all you need to do to add a new photo field to a layout. And I'll show you that this field works identical to this here in a second. So the second thing I want to show you is adding a new value list and how simple that is. 
So if you go to the dimensions field, I'm going to go here down at the bottom and use this. So let's bring in the inspector palette, go to the data tab, and then right here you've got edit box. That's what this field currently is set up as. It is set up as a free form field, just type whatever you want. I want to change this to drop down list and then values from what, where do you want to have your value list derive from. We're going to go ahead and make a new value list. So I'm going to press new here. Let's call it dimensions. Let's just add a couple test values, 5x5, 10x10, 15x15. Press OK. It's OK here. And then to be consistent the way that iScience set up the fields, I'm going to go ahead and add a, a arrow to show and hide the list. So I'm going to check this little box right here. And I'll save my layout again. Okay, so we've added we've added the photo field, we've made the value list. So you can see the photo field is here, the value list, you got dimensions, has it there. I'm going to show you that this works on an iPad. So I'm going to replace the old version with the new version. So to do that, I'm going to do I'm going to use iTunes again. And there's there's other ways to to move to move files from the iPad or from, from a desktop to an iPad. iTunes is one as I'm showing. You can also attach it to an email and just send it via email. And then you can use Dropbox as well. So th there's a number of ways you can do this, but we're going to use iTunes for, for this demo. I'm going to go ahead and drag it and override what's already there. You'll see it's asking, do you want to you replace the old version of the new one? I do. Replace. Let's go ahead and take a look at my iPad. Let me get that back up here, and I will show you that. Just open up Wishart again. Just go here, and you'll see that the Photo 2 field is there now. This is the updated version, and that the dimensions does have a drop down. So, okay, so I'm going to move the current system that iScience is using to my iPad here. So let me do that, and let's bring back up my iPad. Okay, I'm going to open up the current system here. Okay, the first thing you'll see that it looks pretty different from the starter solution. That's because we actually built this system from scratch. We didn't continue with the starter solution, mainly because the starter solution had other things that we didn't need in it. We just wanted to have a fresh start. And we, we decided to, to skin the application so it's, the colors are more along the lines of the branding of iScience. iScience is blue, grays. So instead of the, the brown and, and the blues. And you'll see up here in the top that there's three modules. So you've got the inventory module, which is the main module. And these other two modules are really set up, and they're, they're for the auto population of data based on the tag numbers. So you've got financial asset module here, and you have a C equipment module here. And if you notice, you've got the asset number here, and this is what's on the barcodes. So that this is what will fill in on the inventory record and then the description from this asset number, make, model, serial number, etc. will fill in on the inventory number when you type in that asset number and the CE equipment is the same way, it just has a CE number here. So the, these financial asset numbers and CE equipment numbers are just numbers that are assigned from, from Louisiana State. They're, just, they're from different databases, one's from finance, a financial database, another one's from a clinical engineering database, but the idea is iScience was leveraging this data to, to speed up data entry on the inventory collection side. So that's what they wanted us, that was the primary focus of this application was to build the ability to put in an asset number or a CE number and for all the information that it could to populate automatically so, so they can catalog numbers faster and more efficiently, which ultimately will save them money and, and it saves the client money as well, the, the hospital in this case. So let me go and show you how that works. I'm going to make a new inventory record here and so you'll see that the description's blank. We do have these filled in and I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. But the, the rest of it, like the details here, manufacturer, make, model, serial number, etc., those are all blank. So all this information should fill in when I type an asset number. So I'm going to do that manually. So I'm going to go one, five, four, zero, one, five, 
So you'll notice that it didn't find anything here. We, we actually have an indicator that says if it found a match or not uh, to, to, so that this increases the accuracy of the input. So I noticed I mistyped. I added an extra one here. So let me get rid of one of those and I do that. There we go. Now it says found and you'll see the description filled in and then the details here, the manufacturer make, model, serial number, et cetera, all filled in. And that came from the financial asset number record that matched this asset number. So let me just show you that the C number as well works. So once I clear up the asset number, notice all the information cleared itself out. So I'm going to type a CE number in here. If we go, there we go. So the same information, description, manufacturer, make, model, et cetera, all filled in. So it saved them a, a significant amount of data entry time and it made the data entry very accurate. So they wanted to go a step beyond this and they wanted to be able to they wanted to be able to scan the barcodes and then have the barcode contents automatically populate this, the asset number or the CE number. So they used a third-party Bluetooth scanner, handheld scanner for this, but you can also use FileMaker's native barcode scanning, and that's what I'm going to show you guys here today. So let me go and I made a separate layout for the native barcode scanning. So I added a scan button here. Let me show you how that works. Let's make a new item. And I'm going to press the scan button and it's going to bring up the camera because the camera is what's used to scan a barcode. So you'll see I have a barcode right here. I'm going to put it in front of the camera and it should capture it once it focuses itself well enough. There we go. And so you see it filled in the FileMaker, filled in the asset number from the barcode, and it did the same thing as manually entering it and auto-populated all the data. So let me go ahead and show you how easy it is to set up that scan button, to set up scanning, barcode scanning with the native FileMaker capabilities here. So let's close this file, and let's go back to the desktop, because again, we need to use FileMaker Pro on the desktop to do any design changes. So I'm going to open up that same system. And I'm going to go ahead and just use this, the main layout here, to add the button. So I'm going to go into layout mode. And then I'm going to go to insert menu up here and go to button to add the button. And the barcode scanning is just one script step, which you can select from the standard set of script steps here. So I'm going to do insert from device. And then I'm going to specify, I'm going to pick the target field. I'm going to pick the field that FileMaker is going to put the barcode contents into. In this case, it's going to be the asset number field. So I'm going to press OK there. And then where are we inserting from? We're inserting from barcode. That's what you want to select. And you can just go and press OK on this screen. Press OK. And then we need to name the button. Let's name it scan, just like the other one. I'm going to drag it here on the top left. That's where we've got some room in the layout. And then I'm going to save the layout. So now we have our button here. And now I'm going, to, I'm going to take this new version of the system and put it on my iPad just like the Wizard changes we made. So let me get iTunes back out here. Let me drag this and plus replace. And let's go ahead and open up my iPad again. Let's open up the inventory tracker system. So this is the new, the new version. You'll see that I have the scan button here now on my iPad. So I'm going to make a new record and I'm just going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to press the scan button and you will see that it works just like the other scan button does. There we go. It's as simple as that to add barcode scanning to FileMaker Go. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you here is you're, I'm, I'm sure you're thinking how if you have a you know handful of teams going out with c local copies of this application and, and gathering data every day, how do you get all that data back together? So in the, th there's a number of ways you can do this. But in the case of iScience, they were totally fine with 
taking the the copies of the copies of the file from each iPad, all the copies from the iPad, and importing them in manually into a master copy on a desktop. Let me go ahead and show you how that works. Let me. I'm going to. I need to move a copy. I'm going to move a local copy here onto the iPad. And let me open that up on the iPad. Get this up. Okay, so I've got this. Go to my device. All right, I've got this import file. This is a local copy. I just want to show you what's in it. So we have four four records here, and they just they have each one have photos, and this is just this this is, these are all the the inventory I took for one day. This is just let's just pretend this is all the inventory I took for one day. I got these four equipment pieces of equipment that I did, and I want to go ahead and, and get that into the master. So what I do is I close my copy here on the iPad and I go to iTunes and I do the opposite. Instead of moving something from the desktop into iTunes, I'm going to move something out of iTunes into the desktop. So let me drag, I just click on this here in iTunes and I'm going to drag it to the desktop. There it is. And I'm going to open up the master. I have a master copy here on the desktop. I'm going to open that up, FileMaker Pro. And you'll see there's five five records in the master. And once I'm done importing from the iPad's copy, I should have nine. So if I go up to File here and go Import Records File, I'm going to go and select my let's go select the local copy, which I believe is right here. Okay, here's the iPad copy. So it brings up field mapping, a field mapping dialog. So you know, make sure that everything's set up here appropriately. I'm just going from inventory. So the source here is the iPad copy. So I'm trying to import inventory records from the iPad to inventory into the inventory table in the master. So we're doing inventory to inventory, and we want to arrange by matching names since these are identical copies of the same application. And I just want to make sure all the arrows are matching up here, and they are. So I'm just going to press import, and then just press that again. And FileMaker said, hey, we added four. Great. If I do a show all here, you'll see I have nine records now. And there are my records from the iPad. So that's what iScience did at the end of every day. And we could have gotten more elaborate on on this method, but for what they wanted for the LS, LSU system, this, this the idle population and, and everything was so, you know, the, the increase in efficiency, in efficiency was so great that they just, they didn't need the, the uh, more elaborate syncing solution at that time. So the, the transition from the paper to the, to the spreadsheet to the iPad application, it reduced time to take inventory threefold with much greater accuracy and it resulted in lower fees for for iScience's clients, the hospitals, and it, it also gave greater profit margins to iScience. So that's it. Thanks, Jeremiah. That was a uh, great uh, presentation and demonstration. Oh, well, hold on, Mark. Let me, uh, I apologize. I do have one other thing here. Um, our services, if you're interested in DB services helping you get up and running with a mobile application in FileMaker Go, feel free to contact us. We offer support, development, training, and coaching and licensing services. You can learn more at our website, www.dbservices.com. Thank you. Mark? On the next slide here, I want to talk about some of the FileMaker resources that we have available out on our website. These are important links that uh, you could definitely copy down. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, FileMaker Go 13 is free. It's a free download. Um, more customer success stories. I mentioned this at the beginning as well. We've got a whole library um, and videos of different success stories like the couple that you heard about today. 
And then we've got um, traditionally every week we've got web seminars on different topics, including this one, paper replacement. And then finally, we've got some training resources as well. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, this being probably the, the, the most important um, FileMaker training series, this is our basics, and this is actually a, a free download. So for the, the new folks on the phone today that are just learning about FileMaker, this is a great training session for you to download, FileMaker Basics. It's for begin, beginning developers. And then if you get to the point where you want to start developing solutions for your organization, we have the advanced version as well.